Well, hello and welcome back to the Yarslow Model Railway. It's been a while, isn't it? Uh, mostly because of a bit of this and a bit of this, um, but mostly because we've been doing quite a tidy up ahead of putting curtaining around under the baseboards to hide all the stuff that's stored in the shed. Anyways, the last time I was with you, um, I revealed that Hornby magazine were interested in featuring the layout and I was expecting a visit from their uh, associate editor to come and take a few pictures and sort out some words. Well, um, as far as I know, they're still interested, but I haven't heard any more as yet, so that has not been progressed. Hopefully, it will be progressed in the next few weeks or so. But in the meantime, let me give you a quick uh, tour around some of the updates and a quick look around the shed for the benefit of those um, new subscribers amongst you who would like to know how it all fits together. Well, I finally got round to fitting handles to the cartridges. This is 10 mil by 2 mil aluminium strip that uh, has been bent in the vise, a little bit of heat to help it move. And then some 2BA brass screws and nuts, plenty of clearance on the inside. And that has given me uh, very useful handles, makes it so much easier to move these. I was having serious problems and fears that I was going to drop trains. And they're now as easy as you like to pick up, drop into the slot. As you can see, the handles stay in place, the little doors as before. Then uh, a couple of connections on the end. Alignment is the fact that the trays are the same width as the gap. And there we are, we're good to go. Now here's another new development. You'll remember the old um, control panel, the old plywood control panel that belonged here. I've had it replaced. Uh, this is um, plastic coated aluminium. And all I've done is to put and move all the switches that were on the old panel and simply put them all into the new one. Um, it now matches the master cab control panel, the LED that was in there before. And there's the clear up benefits of this end section. This is where the, um, the chap who is gonna be the master controller is going to sit and, uh, and operate the layout. And here's the master cab control panel that will be at his fingertips. And to put in this into some kind of perspective, this is what he can see from sitting on his stool Yarslow on the far side, the branch in front of you, Trinity Square the other side of the central divide and then the storage sidings down the right hand side of the shed. This is 20, just over 28 feet by 13. And if you look the other way from the master cab control panel there's the CCTV and then you've got the um, section map. This is the control panel for middle junction then you've got the loco storage area behind you. And beyond the loco storage area, of course, is the storage sidings themselves. Looking the other way here, these tracks all connect up to what is collectively really known as the Trinity Square storage area. That's this line here, comes in from Middle Junction. Uh, the line on the right is the main line. Uh, it fans out into the storage sidings for Midworth. Here's all the Midworth trains waiting to come into Trinity Square. But the line continues beyond them and then past another fan of sidings starting here that lead out to the cartridge. And then you've got a range of sidings. These aren't necessarily Trinity Square storage sidings, but it's collectively known as Trinity Square. So you've got the cartridge here. This is to pick up goods. This is the parcels train. And then you've got a couple of sidings there for the Wisney train. The DMU from Retford lives on the outside and there's a couple of spare parcels vehicles right over on the far side. And that's totally independent from the main running loops. There is a crossover between the two. That's this crossover here that links the Trinity Square storage uh, with the main line. Here's the main line. This is Trinity Square storage. So whilst this new panel went in, I did carry out an amendment and that is to add an extra switch and an extra siding. You'll remember from the old panel, this siding was quite short. It was only about a foot long because it accommodated the inspection saloon, which now lives here with the track cleaner. So what I've managed to do is to extend this uh, berth D, as it's called, all the way down. Um, it now holds the Trinity Square Vans train. So instead of having berths A, B and C, I've now got a berth D, which is useful. 
and obviously to make it a workable siding I've needed to put an isolator in the end so that now has an isolator with on and off switches to isolate the engine and on the subject of fascias protecting the uh, trains these are now complete all the way down this side all in front of the cartridge and round the end past the permanent way uh, control panel there's a new end section there these fascias have been in place before this is the one at the end of the branch and at the end of Trinity Square across in front of the Traversa these have been in place for some time they've all been painted as you can see as well but I've now completed them all the way up the other end and now there are fascias around in middle junction as well and across the uh, the front of the storage areas here really to protect the trains and to stop me knocking things off all the way back down to the middle of storage sidings so our train that we put onto our cartridge just now let's bring that out onto the main line so we're going Trinity Square storage to up main that's lever 4 so pull lever 4 that sets all the points at middle junction and then from the master cab control panel we're going to put Trinity Square storage onto B and then we'll put the up line onto B as well so any one of the 14 sections can be um, switched over to any one of the controllers 10 controllers around the layout and if I move controller B which is over by Yarslow here comes my train off the cartridge up that line that we saw running past the Trinity Square storage sidings themselves we can monitor progress of the train using the CCTV there's a new camera position bottom left that allows us to see the train coming out of storage and through middle junction that's been a great help here it comes bottom left and then eventually it appears on the layout and we can uh, watch it run through the scenery Now a few of the other jobs that I've been doing have included adding crews to all of the engines including the new class 2 so they're now complete and the vast majority of trains now have the correct headlamp codes still got a few brake van lamps to fit and here is the gantry simple construction made out of 2x2 for that new camera position sitting over the Trinity Square storage tracks I've also added some coloured letters to all the various controllers. So this is A and B. These are the two that are at Yarslow. But this is uh, one area at Yarslow which I really need to spend some time on. This is the coal yard, which is very clean and very simple. I've started with a coalman and some scales, but it's all very empty here, as you can see. Particularly this area here, round in front of the stables. I'm going to need a coal lorry. I really think I ought to have a yard office and a waybridge or something there probably some protection against uh, anything straying onto the tracks and to protect the shunters but at least there's a cat sitting on the end of the buffers continuing with developments I've uh, replaced that water tower at Yarslow uh, branch loco shed I didn't like that old one so this is uh, the original tank with a new base with the same uh, stonework as at Yarslow an old steering wheel and a few bits of plastic card making up a control valve for the flow of the water and I've moved the coal stave to the other side of the line clearly everything needs bedding in here as you can see but um, that looks a lot better I think a new postman arrived at Yarslow two postmen in fact on the layout And there's a few extra little tweaks going on at the old permanent way depot, a bit more scenery, 
um, the diesel shunty now here but there are some real developments at Trinity Square including these lovely cast bollards very period of the 1960s so there's a pair there for a level crossing that's going to be and the other one I've put up this end with some traffic lights and a telephone box just protecting the junction for cars pulling out across the main road there alongside walls some old signal box stanchions and some wire painted to make my handrail for the gantry this was dead straight till I painted it I bent all the wire so I need to straighten all that up and in that gap there will be a ladder coming down to ground level loads more work to do but looking a lot better no real changes at Trinity Square Station other than the Sentinel is now on duty doing the shunting and I'm still trying to find an interior for the Anne Corton signal box kit the big change here going on from uh, the last video is that everything has been weathered the canopies have now all been weathered so we're getting closer and closer to that grotty station feel that I wanted to capture here um, this might look strange these are the traffic lights at the bottom here masked up ready to go and all the figures standing on their heads because I'm painting their boots but there's been a few things going through the paint shop to add to the layout and the rooms at Trinity Square continue to be developed this was the old stationer's office that's now complete uh, the, then the porter's corridor you can see how this is done this is just plastic card for the panelling wainscot and uh, skirting board that door leads through into this room which is the porter's bothy if you like tables and chairs notices this is what it looks like the bicycle parked under the window I found a bicycle in uh, my spares box notices in the corner I mean it's, it looks quite crude close up but from a distance it looks absolutely fine the inevitable telephone and then through the other room is the lamp room where the porters will probably be preparing lamps for the uh, the trains this is the main entrance to Trinity Square and it's going to have a nice fancy tiled Victorian floor and it's actually a copy of the Victorian floor that's in my house I live in a Victorian house so this has been uh, cut and pasted to make up a nice floor and uh, they'll have all the uh, fancy treatments around the walls as well and then this is the overall look now at Trinity Square with the uh, weathering of the canopies and all looking lovely and grotty and if we pop the other side of the central divide we come across the branch this is High Marsh the terminus represented here by the Traversa and through the tunnel mouth there we come into Blowick Lane a little bit more scenery done here I need to renew that door cover here's a familiar picture of the branch you can see how far the two stations are apart only about seven feet but it's a compromise that I'm prepared to accept and then we come down into Butterbump and Mumby with its single siding and then the row boxes factory on the left more traffic for row boxes in the form of some resin boxes a bit more scenery being added here behind the uh, entrance and then to the left this this scene looks okay but you can see under the bridge there's a kind of light brown bit and what I've had to do is to extend the scenery through under the road bridge with the ballast but I haven't yet painted the sky when I do that it'll look as if the scenery continues well beyond the bridge I've been experimenting also with some new uh, tarpaulin wagons so I've done two or three this one sits at Butterbump and Mumby and just going back to this image and the fact that these two stations are only seven feet apart um, just an operational point here you'll notice in the far distance top right of this photograph you've got Blowick Lane with its sidings facing inwards which means that any shunting goes on by running a train out of the station onto the Traversa and then back into the sidings and this end at the bottom where the camera is sitting which is Butterbump and Mumby the, the sidings face the other way so again if a train is going to do any shunting it sits in the platform runs away from the branch under the road bridge uh, in fact over the top of middle junction and then pushes the wagons back into the sidings by facing the stations in this way there is no shunting manoeuvring going on um, in the stretch of line you see between the two stations and that gives the impression 
that the two stations are further apart. It's only a minor little thing, but does make a difference where you're running two stations close together. So let's continue our good look around the layout by taking a train, following a train around the down line. This is the horse box special coming out of the storage area running around the signals incidentally only mark the end of the point work behind the control panel and onto the permanent way or behind the permanent way section here at Yarslow this is crossing the door of the shed and then under the road bridge on this 48 inch curve through the platforms at 12 foot radius Beyond the platforms you see the yard in the foreground. We pass the main signal box at Yarslow. This is all down one side of the shed. The building in the foreground covers the control panel and signal lever, uh, point levers for Yarslow. The branch in the background there. You can see the branch rising past the branch loco shed and then the train disappearing from the scenic section with the branch rising in the background not disappearing from view entirely of course because it runs off scene through middle junction the branch going over the top here this train is on the main line the line in the foreground is the Trinity Square storage line the one in the background is the up main round past the loco storage area and then the fan of storage sidings, eight up and eight down storage sidings, each one holding at least two trains. An extreme left loop, an extreme right loop. There is a line between the train on the far right and the wall. These are the continuous runs and the main line. Now, not all trains go all the way around the main line at Yarslow. You can arrive on the uh, down main here behind the permanent way yard and take the inside line which leads in front of Yarto South signal box through the other arch of the overbridge into Yarslow's platform 3 this is the engineers train taking this route and you can see it comes through on the inside the line in front of the train here is in fact the permanent way yard head shunt and forms a run round for any train in platform 3 the sidings where the three wagons are standing are actually the exchange sidings for the branch and you can bring a train to a stand on platform three and then clearly overtake with another train running through on the down main a useful operational tool so let's use this train to have a good look around the branch looking through Yarslow's yard here, the goods loop is the train uh, is the line that the train is on. From platform three, you can take the crossovers across the up and down main lines to access the branch by means of two trailing single slips. Across and then onto the gradient. It came out a little steeper than I anticipated. It came out at about 1 in 45. I was hoping to get it to about 1 in 60. But in fact it rises to its optimum height a little earlier than I anticipated. But it's not a problem. This is a view taken from beside the water tower at the Yarslow Branch loco shed. I don't think I've had the camera in this position before. So a, a different view of a branch train reaching the top of the rise, Yarslow in the background. Passing the new camera position and uh, silhouetted against the window, the branch crosses over the top of Middle Junction here. And then appears under the road bridge and into Butterbump and Mumby Station.
through the station and heading down the branch. Over the river. The river is the same height as Yarslow in Trinity Square here. And the branch obviously having risen up gives us a nice bit of uh, contour in this section of the layout. And then the train starts its final part of its journey, passes Blowick Lane, past a little halt, and its single siding. Eventually running under that uh, paper door and into the traverser, which represents High Marsh and the branch terminus. Now here's a little bonus, Sundays with the engineer trains in occupation, there isn't a lot of traffic, but here's a train that you might see, this is a Pigeon Special, heading south on the Up Main, arriving at Yarslow, running in front of the goods yard. The Sigmund sending the 131 bell code onto the next box. And two bells train into intersection as the pigeons run through the platform heading south. Under the road bridge, round in front of Two Birches Cottage, and as the inspector and his mate chat in the permanent way yard about what's to be done today, the pigeons disappear in the background. So we've taken a very good look around the layout and seen all there is to see. You've seen all the various parts of it now, and hopefully it'll all fit together, and you get some idea of how the shed is laid out. Uh, going forward, um, the layout is virtually finished other than some detailing. So I'm not going to be doing a monthly update as I have done because it's just going to cover off one or two minor little bits and bobs that I've been doing. So there's going to be a slight change of tack. I've been collecting footage for doing the Making Yarslow series. So that's going to get up and running. And also I've got one or two more bite-sized bits up my sleeve, which I'll get out to you. Uh, hope that's okay. Hope you've enjoyed yet another visit to Yarslow. Uh, stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you all soon.